Hello everyone, uh, my name is Sydney Hauke. I work for the HEIG and in this presentation I will talk about software implementation of LDPC decoders. Uh, this was the heart of two of uh, the activities I worked on. Uh, concretely, the first activity was about implementing uh, a high throughput, low latency decoder of LDPC encoded DVB-S2 frames. So uh, the accent was put on the performance of the decoder, not but the specifics of uh, DVB-S2 uh, itself. Um, and the second uh, activity was about implementing the LDPC decoder that was missing in the GNU Radio CCSDS module that is uh, currently maintained by the LibreSpace Foundation. On um, this uh, second decoder, performance was not uh, really the, the, the main issue here, so we didn't focus too much on it. But for the first activity, that was the, the main uh, focus. Um, <clears throat> in this presentation, I will not go into specifics with LDPC applied to CCSDS or DVBS2. Uh, I will really focus about uh, performance, uh, actual execution time performance, not decoding performance, um, because that was really the main focus, the main purpose of these uh, activities. So uh, for you to understand <coughs> the um, the actual implication, the, the challenges that we uh, faced uh, during uh, these activities regarding performance. I will do a quick recap on uh, error correction codes, uh, then I will explain what LDPC codes are, how they function, uh, then I will explain how we decode LDPC code words, and then I will be able to, to show you how in a software implementation, how would you uh, optimize the performance in execution time uh, of the LDPC decoder. And then I will show you just some quick um, numbers that we got um, at the end of the activity with regard to throughput and latency of the decoder that we got. So I think I'll, I'm not teaching you to, to anyone here. Error correction codes are useful when we send um, messages through a noisy channel. Um, sometimes bits get lost, sometimes bits get flipped, we get a corrupted message at the end, and the solution is error correction codes. So basically, um, we add redundant information to the message that you want to send, and in the end, if not too many, uh, too much information is lost at the end, we can recover the original message. Uh, here, for example, I'm showing uh, a block error, error correction code. We append redundant bits at the end of a message, and the value of these bits, of these redundant bits, are a function of the uh, message that uh, we want to uh, code. So when we want to um, use um, an error correction code and we want to decode it, um, we have some critical requirements in the, um, in the context of uh, radio communication. Of course, high throughput is a really critical um, requirement, uh, especially uh, today in modern radio communication protocols. Uh, for example, in uh, Wi-Fi 802.11 N AC AX, currently they use LDPC codes. DVB-S2, we transport um, video, so throughput is really uh, a critical requirement here. In other applications, in, actually in many other applications, low latency is also critical. Um, uh, for example, you could think about, you know, controlling a robot at the other end of the earth 
uh, in latency here is really critical. Maybe you need a reaction time of less than a millisecond, for example. And then there is also power consumption, since um, radio can be done on uh, mobile devices that run on batteries. We need to really, um, really be um, careful about power consumptions. So now, um, what is LDPC? So LDPC stands for Low Density Parity Check Codes. Um, what is important to know about LDPC codes is that it's a block code. So we have the message that we want to encode and we append redundant bits at the end. And what is what we want with the, these bits at the end, the redundant bits that we add, is that they have they need to have a value that satisfies um, the parity check matrix here in the slide, the H matrix. And <clears throat> what we do is that we um, group together bits of the message together. So here, for example. Uh, we read the first line, the first row of the H matrix. So uh, V1, V2, V4, V6 are grouped together to the C1 row. Uh, and same goes on for the second, third and fourth row. And this um, grouping that can be represented by this graph just below the H, H matrix, we link together some bits together to what we call parity check nodes. Uh, C1, C2, C3, C4. And these groupings um, have a property that is mapped to it. So let's say C1 is connected to V1, V2, V4, and V6. The property is that the, the message is valid if when we sum the values of all these bits, V1, V2, V4, V6, we should have a even number. So that's why we call these parity check nodes parity check nodes. And for the whole message to be valid, the these parity check properties must hold for all the check nodes that we have in this graph. That's how uh, an LDPC code is valid. So trivially, checking the validity of an LDPC uh, code word is really easy. We have to check for each check node if the constraint is uh, satisfied, if the parity is satisfied. However, error correction, when we find out that the message is corrupted, is trivial and naively hard. So uh, if you think about uh, correcting any potential error naively, it's really hard <coughs> without clever uh, algorithms. <coughs> <clears throat> so the problem is <clears throat> there is no direct tribal way to tell if a received bit is erroneous or not because of these parity check properties. Instead, we seek the most probable code word sense given the code word received. So we could, for example, brute force every possible code word and find the one with the highest probability of uh, having been sent. But uh, that is impractical because brute forcing every code word would require uh, 2 to the power of k code words to try, and uh, that is completely impractical, impractical in real life. The practical way is to use a method called belief propagation that I will explain. So belief propagation is a method that we apply to graphs. So it's really interesting here in our case because LDPC works on a graph. And the, um, the method consists of iteratively updating the estimates of each bit that we received uh, on the, uh, after the demodulation of the signal. So we gathered estimates for each bit. So uh, then in that case, we call these bits soft bits. 
instead of hard bits. Hard bits are either zero or ones, and soft bits have this uh, additional information, the, the the estimates, and it's a really useful information for decoding. Basically, belief propagation will, like you see on the graph on the right, consist of gathering estimates to each check node, and from that point, try to find new estimates, new probabilities for these uh, values, uh, depending on the values of other bits. So, uh, for V1, we will try to produce a new estimate in function of the values of V2, V4, and V6 that we just uh, saw, and we do the same for the other bits. Then we scatter the new estimates, and we do that for each check nodes. That is a whole iteration of the belief propagation. And just after a few iterations of this algorithm, we can find the or original message really quickly. So in real world applications, we can apply this uh, algorithm, belief propagation, um, with just a few iterations and we get the, um, the, the original message. And it's uh, so um, practical that um, with just only tens of iterations we can get close to the Shannon limit. And uh, also just a quick comment on the number of iterations, of course. The more you iterate with belief propagation, the lower the error flow is. So <clears throat> it has an implication when you try to implement an LDPC decoder. If your decoder is really, really fast, you can do more iteration in the same amount of time and lower the error flow. And um, in that case, it can really benefit uh, power consumption. If the error flow is, is even uh, lower, we can transmit emit at a lower power. Now that you have an understanding of LDPC codes, uh, let's talk about optimization of uh, a software decoder. So the, the first optimization and the most crucial one is the choice of uh, the algorithm. Belief propagation comes in many variants, and all these variants have some advantages and some disadvantages, and choosing one of them is a matter of, tra of trade-off. Um, recall that belief propagation is all about um, gathering and scattering updates. Um, updates, so these are really you know, probability calculations, uh, they come in different uh, versions. So, uh, for example, you have MinSum and some product. Um, and the difference is mostly about the preciseness of the, the computation, because uh, MinSum, for example, is an approximation of um, the some product version. Uh, um, if you have more preciseness, your algorithm will converge to a solution, so uh, an original code word, uh, faster. Uh, but uh, if you have less preciseness, you converge uh, slower, of course. But why use MinSum, for example, that converges slower? It's because it uses um, cheaper operations, uh, like additions and comparison, uh, comparisons. Compared to some product that uses um, trigonometric functions, these are really, really expensive to compute. And usually you would use MinSum instead of some product because in the end it will be faster. Even though you converge slower, uh, it's faster, way faster to compute more approx approximative probabilities uh, than, uh, than the contrary. Um, Another characteristic uh, that you can uh, choose of the belief propagation algorithm is the estimate update schedule. The order in which you update the estimates can be done in many different ways. 
And there are two main uh, schedules that exist today, uh, the flooded and the horizontally layered uh, update schedule. Flooded is more suited for threat parallelization because lots of parallelism is exposed, but it converges slower. However, the horizontally layered schedule converges faster than the, the flooded schedule, but it's really hard to parallelize. There's a lot of sequential operations to perform, uh, so you cannot extract uh, parallel uh, computation in that uh, schedule. Um, we tried flooded and horizontally layered versions, and uh, in our experiments, it's usually faster to actually use the horizontally layered version, even though it's not parallelizable, um, instead of flooded. And flooded, even though it's parallelizable, it's really difficult to, to, to make it uh, worth it at the end. And otherwise, you have many other variants that are researched um, currently. So you could find in many papers other estimate update rules and other update schedules that may be more uh, faster, but uh, we didn't uh, investigate them. The second uh, optimization um, is on IPC and ILP, huh? so instructions per clock cycle and instruction level parallelism. Modern processors can compute on many instructions at the same time uh, during the same clock cycle, so you can help that to, uh, when writing your own C program. Uh, if you write in a clever way, you could extract more instruction level parallelism, so it uh, facilitates the work of the CPU in order to parallelize the, the, the work. Concretely, what you do is that you use, for example, bit hacks, you enroll loops. Um, also, what's also really important is to keep the CPU working at, uh, all the time. If you do um, uh, sequ um, random accesses in memory, you can have cache misses. So it's really important to, to perform sequential data accesses as much as possible. You can also avoid branching. The pipeline of the CPU must be fed uh, uh, at any given uh, time. And with regard to this optimization, the challenges we face with belief propagation is that uh, it's a memory-bound algorithm. So you actually spend more time moving data around than performing calculations. And processors are not optimized for uh, data movement. They are more optimized to do calculations. So you expect that for a certain amount of data, you will perform uh, way more calculations than the actual uh, data movement. But here, that's not the case. So it limits the, um, the possibilities for us to, 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 to improve the, the algorithm on the IPC side and the ILP side. Uh, also, um, a remark on um, LDPC codes. Um, when you try to improve a program, you are likely to over-optimize, uh, actually over-specialize the optimization to a specific problem. But LDPC codes uh, are constructed on graphs with nodes having different degrees. So, for example, you would specialize a loop uh, that performs an exact number of uh, iterations, but that must work on all the occurrences where you need this loop. Uh, if you have loops that must have different uh, iterations, it's more difficult to, to handle and uh, to program. And since LDPC codes have nodes that have different degrees um, in the same graph, then uh, yeah, it's difficult to, to, to make an algorithm that is really general and generic. And uh, sometimes you need to really over-specialize uh, the optimization and, and it takes a lot of development work. 
The third optimization <coughs> that uh, we can try is to make use of vector instructions. These instructions perform the same operation on multiple data at once. Um, and uh, that is really uh, well applicable to um, multimedia applications. But SIMD is quite challenging to implement uh, in LDPC decoders because first, first of all, data accesses are almost never contiguous. Uh, you can see in the graph, huh? the, 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 the nodes are linked to other nodes that are far away, they are not contiguous. And so when you translate that into the program, the data accesses will never get contiguous. So that is a problem for SIMD because uh, SIMD is not able to vectorize um, these kind of data accesses. It can only vectorize accesses that are contiguous. But if the data is scattered, uh, that is not optimizable with SIMD. And since we do mostly data movement, then the benefits we get from SIMD on the, com the actual computation is really um, uh, marginal, let's say. Also, the computational process is irregular. You need regularity because um, you perform um, multiple data at the same time and you need the same length of the data flow. Uh, if um, in a lane the data flow um, uh, finishes sooner, um, then the computation is uh, really difficult to, 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 to continue. Um, the, also the problem with SIMD is that uh, you will need to implement for a specific LDPC code. You know that in protocols you have different codes for different code rates and with SIMD you would need to uh, implement one version per code and that is that becomes really cumbersome and uh, in that case, it's not possible to, to make uh, a generic implementation of the decoder that works for all codes in the same protocol, let's say. Uh, and that is a really big disadvantage. Also, SIMD is not portable. So if you write your C code for x86 computers, so you process it on your laptops or desktop, uh, it won't work on... Um, ARM processors, so for example, the uh, Apple M1 laptops that uh, came out recently, that will not work. You will need to specialize again with vector instructions for ARM processors. Last optimization is multi-threading. So that is um, a more easier optimization. Uh, basically what you do is that you partition your problem into sub-problems that can be performed in parallel independently. And that will effectively use multiple CPU cores in uh, parallel. Um, so there are many ways to actually implement uh, thread parallelism um, for LEPC. One is to um, make multiple threads work at the same time on the same code, work, code word that you want to uh, decode. That's called the intra-code word parallelism. But that is quite challenging because um, first you cannot parallelize over multiple iterations because the iterations of the belief propagation algorithm are dependent. Uh, so you can only parallelize inside one iteration and threads need to synchronize uh, at the end of uh, each iteration. And synchronization is quite uh, costly and can incur some latency in the, um, in the computation process. Another possibility is to do inter-code word parallelism. So that is the most easily, easy, most easy operations um, optimization that you can do. And uh, theoretically, you could push the throughput of your decoder really, really high because you apply one thread to a new code word that, uh, that uh, comes in. 
Um, so that is the most easiest form of parallelism that you can apply. And theoretically, yeah, the, the, the throughput can be uh, can go really, really high. But that will not um, help for the latency of the decoder. The decoding latency will be still quite uh, high if you do that. But if you do intra code word parallelism, uh, you could expect that the uh, decoding latency will drop. So here are some numbers that we got after optimizations. Um, that, um, these are numbers that we got on the decoder for DVBS2 LDPC codes. And what we can say is that we can most of the time achieve um, reasonable high throughput uh, here up to 53 megabit per second in the best case. However, the latency is still not really satisfying because here we are in the millisecond range and I know that uh, hardware decoders are much, much more efficient. They have latency decodings below the microsecond. So uh, in software, I think that that is not achievable uh, because there are many, many uh, obstacles uh, in order to uh, descend below the microsecond uh, level because the um, SIMD optimization and the multi-threading are really hard to apply to in order to decode under the microsecond. So in conclusion, yes, the, I think high throughput is really achievable with software. We saw that with multi-threading. But as far as I know, decoding latency uh, will be, we will not be able to, to go uh, as far as hardware decoders. Uh, I've read in some paper that some hardware decoders uh, can perform belief propagation iterations in only two clock cycles. And that is never achievable with, uh, with software. And in the end, I think FPGAs could be a solution. Um, these are reprogrammable, so really suited for software-defined radio. And you could um, implement any hardware accelerator that you want on it. And you could couple with, uh, that with a software solution on the system on chip. Thanks for watching.